I've always considered Lance to be a weaker weapon within the Freedom series of Monster Hunter. Back in the day I never used to use it very much, so I wanted to create a character that strictly uses Lance and make a series to see if the Lance can redeem itself in my eyes. I'm not sure how long the series is going to go, but this will be exploring the Lance. Okay, here I am. Lump. That's me. Let's switch to the Lance. Give you a long horn to begin with, which has barely any yellow sharpness whatsoever. I'm gonna put this on because it's a freebie, why not? And I'll just sell the rest of this stuff. Okay, let's take a look. What's our first upgrade? Brute bone and bone. I'm actually going to buy a iron lance. Let's see if we can get anything better. Uh, four iron ore. Okay, so we get screen sharpness actually on the first upgrade. Well, that's pretty good. So I think I'll be going to the iron lance plus. Let's buy some pickaxes. Sure, why not? Some bug nets. Sure, why not? are worthless. So for this playthrough I'm not really aiming for any kind of particular goal. I'm not sure if I'm gonna want to go to a canto, if I want to collect all the lances or not. I think I'm just gonna play casually, see how I feel, because I haven't really used Lance a whole lot in Freedom Unite in the most recent years. Back in Mudstone 01, when I first started playing it back in like 2005, I actually used a main lance along with hammer, those are my two weapons. So I used to use mostly longsword, greatsword, sword and shield, stuff like that. Then in the speedruns for Freedom Unite, you basically just use the bow guns because sleep bombing is disgusting. So I just want to use the weapon a lot, see how I feel. For my stream, actually, I have a profile that's dual blades only, and I have a character that's only dual blades, because similar concept, I basically never use the dual blades. This is a very convenient mining place for this quest. In my Dual Blades playthrough, I actually restricted myself to not use Mega Juices because I wanted to feel the Dual Blades as authentically as I could. So for the Lance, I could do a similar thing. I could not use Mega Juice so that I have to plan my dodges and my blocks carefully. But I'm not sure if you'd want to see some other restrictions done, like no traps, no bombs, no flash bombs, things like that. Let me know. Okay, so I can get the Iron Lance Plus, so I'll get that and equip it straight away. So looking at a weapon tree that I have on the side here, I think that Bone Javelin is going to be the most interesting. Elyon, Brute Bones, Small Monster Bones. I think Granny definitely sells Small Monster Bones, I wonder if she's got any now. She doesn't. Wait, does she? Yes, she does. Okay, I completely glossed over. So, I need four, I think that said. So I'll get that. And then the others was Brute Bone, correct? It was. So, four Brute Bones. You can get those from Popo. You can also get them from the quest rewards in the Popo quest. So, these are going to be easy to get. 
I'm actually going to buy another iron lance. I should have enough iron ore, oh, right? Upgrade this? Oh, that's all of it. Okay, well that's fine. So, Bone Javelin is actually a really good early game lance. It does a lot of damage, although it does have very minimal green sharpness. It's a really good option for the early game. I have seen this cutscene well over several thousand times at this rate, just because of speedrunning. Hello Tigrex, you are very intimidating. Sometimes it's difficult to turn off speedrunner brain mode, where I think, oh I have to get moving, I have to go do something else, do this, do that, when really, I can just chill and gather from everything if I want to. I've been speedrunning for so long that it's hard to turn off that go mode sometimes. It's... Oh, I only got one item. I was hoping for some Maclite Tower which you can get from this spot. Oh, I have five zenny. I am extremely broke. Okay, let me go sell some stuff. Try this again. Okay, our first boss of this weapon, and it's a Deirdre. Nothing too serious, nothing too crazy. It's pretty simple with every weapon type, and it's nothing to worry about really. I don't know why I'm taking the trap, I'm not going to be using it. is actually any good in this matchup. If it makes him flinch, yeah. It's so laggy though. Wow, that hit me. Oh, here we go, here we go. I bounced on a gear prey. Oh no. Wait, gear prey? What is this? Wait, it is gear prey, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I was thinking again free for a second. I don't know why. Wait, where'd he go? Wait, where is he? Am I blind? Oh, I... Okay. He, like, mixed in with the baby ones and I didn't recognize him. Fun fact for this guy... Oh, I didn't. Okay, cool. Well, fun fact for this guy, um, in Freedom 2, his claws are actually red. His big toenails he's got going on. In Freedom 2, they're red when they're supposed to be blue, and they fixed it in this game, obviously, but it's quite funky looking in Freedom 2. So I need medium monster bones, killer beetles, maglite, oh, okay. If you're ever stuck for early game medium monster bones, there is actually a really good way of getting them. So if you talk to the farmer guy here in point exchange, you can get these Suko jewels. 
I'm just gonna get... Uh, five. Why not? But you can get these super jewels, and what you could do with them is go to the jungle. So the reason why the jungle is relevant because of the Elder Trader up here, which takes about five minutes to get up to, but this guy will trade you Suko Jewels for Medium Monster Bones. It's a very nice and easy way to get Medium Monster Bones early game without needing to fight anything too serious. There we go. You have a Suko Jewel, don't you? I certainly do. And there we go, Medium Monster Bone. Pretty easy way of getting the melee game. He could also give you that. Four Medium Monster Bones. That's pretty cool. Uh, while I'm here, I'm actually just going to farm some Earth Crystals if I'm able to find any. So here's a mining place that some people are often surprised at. During my streams when I mine here, they seem to not know that it's there, which is not very surprising since it's not exactly obvious that it's here. But if you took yourself into this corner, there's actually a mining spot right here by, by the door of Area 7. Is this Area 7? I think it's Area 7. And then this one's a little bit more obvious because there's like gems and crystals here. Oh, also, I didn't mention this earlier, but a few people seem to not know about this as well. So you can actually deliver quest items from anywhere inside of the camp. So this poor pass ticket here, I can just go to the deliver option and deliver it all on top of this ledge. And then while the time is going down, you can just gather honey or anything like that. So I can get it, I'm just a little bit broke. So I'm actually going to use Sonic Bombs for this, and I'm not sure if I'm going to use Sonic Bombs again in the future, but there is something I want to show you, 
stuff that you can do to make this quest a little bit easier on yourself. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a straight line until we get up to a dark patch. And we hear the Kefloss in our left ear. Then we're gonna do a straight left turn and we're gonna run forward until the second Kefloss, which jumps in front of us, lands into the sand. We're gonna throw a Sonic Bomb and it should guarantee us a double. So straight line. See that dark patch coming up? A straight left. And there's your double. Sometimes the guy on the right will leave a lot like minded, but it's so good because sometimes they get out the sand and then you can get a nice double. If not, you can use small barrel bombs like that. They do give you two, so you don't have to um, worry too much about bringing supplies and getting slapped around by its tail. And then it leaves, I hate this quest. So that's just like an easy way of getting Kefalos out of the sand for this quest. Um, you can actually run away, rinse and repeat if you just leave the area and come back again. A scale, not what you want to see. What's this guy doing? Is he gonna stay? Is he gonna stay accurate on me? Okay, I think I got it. Okay, I got this guy's aggro. Does he dig? He does dig. Place a bomb. I need one more liver. So something a lot of people don't know about Kefalos, which is actually more relevant in Freedom 1 because of the area that these guys are in, but the same general idea still works here. So in this map there are certain checkpoints which the Kefalos will dig to, and at these checkpoints they will stop swimming and they will check if you're in the area, and if you are, they will either aggro on you, or they won't. So these checkpoints are always the same. So the next checkpoint is right there. He's gonna stop at this area right here. There we go, and he'll maybe aggro? He doesn't aggro. Whenever a Kathalos swims, he will go to any of the checkpoints, and whenever he hits a third checkpoint, that's when he'll stop swimming. There we go, so he should stop swimming at this rock over here. There we go, and we'll check for aggro. He finally does. So he'll appear around here. Let's try it. Let's try a Yen Kuku. Let's see how it goes. one of these guys in a long time. 
So for a Yan Kukko, in general, you want to be hitting the wings, especially with a lance, because you can hit quite high with it. But it's a good area to hit. And uh, when he does a tailspin like that, you want to block to the left instead of forward. If you're really close to him, you actually want to block backwards, facing away from the Kukku, which feels a bit awkward and counterintuitive, but it's just the way hitboxes work in this game. They're very awkward. I was hoping for a dunk there. Nice flinch. the attack. Oops. I thought I would be able to walk away in time. So I didn't bother blocking. Rage mode, this is where it, the fight might get a little bit awkward. I'm gonna block. Yeah, I thought he was gonna charge there. When he does quick turns like that, you kind of want to be a little bit careful about his next move. Yeah, there it is. Quick turns usually means he's gonna charge at you. So you just want to block and try and roll out the way if you're on a different weapon. I'm taking a lot of damage right now. This armor is not suitable. I'm just gonna block. Okay, he's taunting. The ears are down, he's weak. I'm gonna keep uh, sidestepping between each attack because he's very fast in rage mode. Oh, okay, there we go. So, yeah, when a monster is in rage mode and you worry about tail swings, you kind of just wanna sidestep each attack and try and move with the monster. So you don't risk getting stepped on or having a sudden attack against you. You want to be ready for its next move at all times. So you don't want to get stuck trying to do a combo and then the monster turns around and charges you. Overall, I think the Yan Kuku is a fantastic matchup for the Lance because the wings being the weak spot and you can take advantage of the fact that its tail swing only goes in one direction. It will only use tail swing counterclockwise to the left of the monster. So as long as you know that you can position yourself properly to make sure you're not getting hit by the tail swings. 